Color grading. How do we do it? How do we make our images go from that to, wow, that's really cool, man. <clears throat> I'm not claiming to be a professional colorist by making this video. The reason I'm making this video is because actually I've had some questions pop up in my Discord server, which you can join for free. We have an amazing community of camera people in there and hop over into that Discord because it's a really great place. Zachy Mae, bro, dad, I've been thinking about this for a while. Would there ever be a chance you could create a color grading video? Yes. Not one that is like, this is the LUT and program that I use because I already know that you use Film Convert. Something more along the lines of the theory that you use when you're color grading. Like what are the vibes that you're looking for? I know how to get good skin tones reasonably, but I struggle with getting the right balance of muted colors and crushed blacks that you manage to get on your beautiful vids. Like in the screenshot attached, there's this perfect mix of crushed blacks and muted colors, but at the same time, it still looks saturated and there's a nice clean level of highlights and the skin tones look nice and colorful. When I try to achieve this look, I always feel like the crushed blacks make it look too contrasty and muting the colors also seems to make people look pale. So yeah, I would just love to see what kind of little adjustments you make and to be honest, also also what your curves look like. You wanna see these curves, baby? That'll be in a, a private video for Discord only, sorry. And that's the footage we're gonna look at today. It's this vlog that I posted that was shot on the Sony a7S III, this camera right here, in S-Log3, S-Gamut3 Cine. Those are the settings that I use on my camera to get the most natural, beautiful looking color. Before we hop into Premiere and show you guys my methods of color grading log footage with for basically any camera, I first need to give you a little bit of context and we gotta talk about exposure. You'll have much more freedom and ease of color grading when you expose correctly. Specifically on my A7S III, I have my zebras set to 55 plus or minus one. So when I'm filming with the A7S III, for instance, filming myself or a subject, I try to get it so that the zebras are on my subject. So like if I'm filming myself right now, there are zebras on the side of my face. And that tells me that my face is just slightly overexposed. So basically by shooting that way, we're overexposing slightly so that when we bring it down a little bit, the image is really, really clean and we still have enough information in our midtones for like the subject. And then the Sony dynamic range is really, really nice. So we still get good highlights and shadows just an overall great image because we're exposing right in that middle ground where Sony likes it. If you don't have a Sony a7S III or you don't wanna try this zebra thing that I do, feel free to try something like false color if you have an external monitor. So just for like a quick before and after to demonstrate like the tones from that vlog that I released, here is the before, this is S-Log3, it's super flat. And then this is with Film Convert and Lumetri applied. Yeah, just look at this, look at this a7S III, man. Like he's just got so much, detail and then the, the highlights still look good. You can see some blue sky and some clouds back here. And this was a very, very bright day. Let's start with this shot here, which was specifically referenced in the Discord. So that's what it looks like after I graded it. I will just go ahead and make a new adjustment layer and, and just clear it out so I can show you guys from start to finish how I would color grade something like this. So this adjustment layer here is fresh. This is fresh. It cleans a baby's butt cheek before the poops. So I applied Film Convert Nitrate to my adjustment layer. And the very first thing you do is you add the camera. So you have to download your camera profile, but it's free from their website. So I'm using Sony, I'm using the A7S Mark III, and I'm shooting an S-Log3, S-Gamut3 Cine for maximum dynamic range and accurate color. Then you apply it and boom, bada bing, bada boom. You got something right off the bat that looks better than just super flat images. This is a great start and now we can just kind of fine tune it to make it look how we want it to look. I want it to have more of a warm vibe. You're like you're invited, you're, is, is warm and sunny and cozy up in here. We got good vibes, positivity only. And that's kind of what I want to go for when crafting this image. So like I talked about earlier, we shoot a little bit overexposed using that 55 plus or minus one zebra tool. The first thing I like to do is just kind of dip the exposure down a little bit. And I'm specifically just like kind of looking at the overall image and skin tones. I never want my skin to look too dark. And then the very next thing I like to do is kill all the grain. I'm not really a fan of grain these days because it just kind of adds a layer between the viewer and the video, in my opinion. I think grain can look really cool, but I'm never really pumped about it in my videos, so I just keep it clean. And also I add about five to 7% softness because the A7S III, although it's only a 12 megapixel sensor, it is extremely sharp 
and I like to just take a little bit of the edge off. Now what I'll do is start cycling through all of these film stocks that Film Convert offers. And this is kind of the beginning of finding the vibe that we wanna go for. And like I talked about, warm, inviting. So what I do is just hover my mouse over this and then I use my scroll wheel to just go down. And I'm just looking at the image and as soon as one kind of catches my eye, that's where I'll start. Ooh, Pravia actually looks really good. I don't think I used that in the original video, but that looks nice. Okay, we'll go with Pravia, and I'm just gonna scroll back the temperature just a little bit. The next thing I do is I go down to here to color correction, and I bump the saturation a lot. I like to add a lot of saturation to make it feel alive, depending on what the project is. That looks sweet, we're at 150. S-Log3 is so flat and so desaturated, so you gotta really pump it back to life. And when I'm messing with the temperature, I'm looking mostly at the white information in the image because I don't want that to look yellow or orange. I want it to look mostly natural white, but we still have some nice warmth in the skin and in his hat and his arm. It, it looks like a happier image, you know? And this is the before so far and the after so far. Another thing I like to do is just kind of mess with this tint slider. Um, I used to use this a lot when I was color grading with different cameras. Luckily, the Sony a7S III has just like really accurate color from what I've experienced. So I usually don't have to change it very much. So I'll probably go negative five just so my brain feels okay. Next thing I do is I mess with these color wheels. And these are really powerful in Film Convert. Sometimes I'll just kind of like dip into the shadows here just to kind of see what it looks like. I kind of go back and forth to see where I want the shadow tone to land. And it's, I mean, it's usually typical, like it's kind of that teal orange look and then once I find the teal or blue tone that I like, I'll just back it off a little bit like that. So it's just subtly affecting the black tones, as you can see. Then I'll use this slider here to start to push the shadow values down to where I like them. And like I said, I'm, I don't want to go below zero IRE. I don't want them to be actually crushed. I just want them to look nice and contrasty and not fadey. I'm not a really big fan of that like Instagram faded film look. And then also I'll tend to mess with this highlight slider here, which is very powerful and can a lot of times get you a lot of information back if something's blown out. And we'll show an example of that in a little bit. But the highlights here are already looking really good. I tend to like my highlights to chill around 95 IRE. So right between 90 and 100, somewhere in there. And then my shadow is just like right above black depending on the shot. And then this mid-tone slider is also incredibly powerful. And I usually use this to just kind of like make sure the subject looks nicely exposed. So I'm looking at Connor's skin tone and face right now just to make sure it looks nice and bright for him, but not overexposed or underexposed. Now, the next thing I like to do is mess with the curves here sometimes. A lot of times I actually don't touch this overall curve. Once in a while, I'll do like a slight S curve. Uh, that's the wrong way a slight S curve <laughs> like this. And basically that'll just like add a little bit of contrast. Like if you see the tones in his face, it's just kind of pumping up the contrast there. Same thing down here. This is like contrast in the shadows and you pull it down a little bit. And if you want more of a fadey look, you can take this one and bring it up a little bit, you know, classic faded Instagram look. So here's after and before. I mean, I actually kind of like it in this scenario, but I don't want this image to be like too contrasty. So this is looking pretty good. So far, here's what we got. Yada, yada, cool. And then I usually don't mess too much with the red and green unless it's like a totally wonky image and I need to like totally kill like color values to try to get things to look natural. Luckily, this shot already looks pretty good. Sometimes I do click on this blue one here and I'll pull it down a little bit if I want more of that like warm summery vibe. And then I'll just ever so slightly back it up back to its normal position until I just feel good about it. So that's like slightly warmer, if you can see that. This has more blue, this has more orange. It's still like too much though. There's still a little bit of blue in the shadows right here, as you can see from this original color wheel that we used, but nothing too drastic. This doesn't look too teal orange in my opinion, but we, we all like a little bit of teal orange. Get over it, stop pretending you're original. So honestly guys, that's most of my work right there is just setting up Film Convert like that. The last thing I will do is add Lumetri Color. And I will drop that underneath Film Convert. And basically the only thing I typically use from here is this Color Wheels and Match tool. But I've noticed that Film Convert's color sliders and Lumetri Color's sliders are different in how they affect the image. Like if I wanted to get more highlights back, I would definitely use the Film Convert slider and pull this down you can even see like it pulls information back into that window area 
and it looks really nice. But if I wanted to just change the overall like exposure level, I would use this one. And you can see it's bringing down the entire top end of this image instead of affecting like just individual highlight values. I hope that makes sense. That's how I see it in my mind. And that's why I use these two tools together. Now I'll use this Lumetri color shadow slider to bring our overall IRE level down. So it's closer to zero. And that's how we're gonna maintain that like contrasty punchy look without changing the vibe of the image too much. So I'll pull it down to be just right above zero. And that looks a little bit, maybe too punchy, but I want the level to kind of hang out there because there is a lot of uh, dark values here. So I might go back to the film converse slider and lift it up here a little bit to give us a little bit more detail. So we have that contrast, but we also have detail and it's not just like completely crushed into black oblivion. <laughs> so here's our before and here's our after. And let's see how close this looks to the original grade I did. Oh, wow, the original one is much darker. I like this one a lot better. Yeah, that's way better. <laughs> now let's do the same with this one, except we're gonna go a little bit more in depth with the skin tones because it's a close up shot of my face and this horse with bird shit all over it. Mm -hmm. So one of the things Jordan mentioned in that Discord question was balancing muted colors, but also like a contrasty punchy shadow look. And I guess we'll try to go a little bit more for that with this image. So obviously we're gonna start with our film convert. Scatter do 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 do. Play jazz music, editor Zach. Thanks. Actually, let's see what our grade from the last shot looks like over this. Hey, that's not too bad actually. A lot of the time, that's what I'm doing anyway. I'll pick a shot like this. It's kind of like neutral where it's got decent exposure and some color in the background, a nice shot of the skin and I'll grade that and then kind of use that as a starting point for all the rest of my shots. So we started with this one, which is a little bit of a darker shot, which makes sense why this grade looks brighter on this bright shot. So what I'm gonna do is just pull this exposure slider down to start off and we'll just kind of see where we're at. Look at that, look at all the highlights. There's detail retained in this shot, which is crazy. So I'm gonna use this exposure slider to get kind of an overall good looking image. I don't want my skin to look too dark and like there's bags under my eyes. So I'm just gonna lift this until my face looks pretty good. Overall looking pretty decent. And then let's see, we're just gonna go down to our sliders here. And remember the film convert sliders affect the individual values really, really well. It's amazing how much you can get back. So like when I pull this back, Look at all that detail coming back into the sky, but my highlight levels are too low. I'm gonna get them back up around 90, 95. And then our shadows, I don't want them completely crushed because this shot is out in bright sunlight. And in real life, you would see detail in all of the blacks outdoors. So like, this is way too crushed looking down here, even though we're close to zero. So I'm gonna lift this up. That's looking pretty good, but now I feel like my face and shirt look a little bit too dark compared to the background. So I'm gonna lift up the mids a little bit so you can see my my face. I like the highlights right around here, but as you can see, we're about to clip. So what I'm gonna do is go down to Lumetri Colors highlights and pull these down just a little bit since it affects that entire top end level. Nothing's actually gonna be like true black in this shot because there's light on everything. So I'm gonna let it all just kind of sit up here a little bit. I don't know if that's scientifically correct, but honestly, I don't really care. Whatever looks good to my eye, makes me feel good, make me feel like I'm invited into this shot, then I'm stoked about that. Before and after so far. Now, honestly, I'm pretty pumped on these skin tones. I might adjust my temperature slider just a little bit to make sure the whites look naturally white. But let's say your skin tone was whack, like maybe you had your white balance off a little bit or there was just a weird color in the skin. What you could do is create another Lumetri color, plop that underneath, and then go to HSL Secondary. And I've talked about this tool quite a bit, but it's one of my favorite tools in Premiere. So right by set color, click this color picker, and then select an even part of the skin that looks like mostly the same color as the rest of the face. Select that and then hit show mask. And now your levels here on both your scopes are gonna reflect only what that mask is selecting. So what you wanna do is come over here and just kind of spread these out a little bit to capture some more detail. And then just kind of like manipulate them around until it's only selecting your face. I'm satisfied with this mask and obviously there's some random selections going on, but to smooth things out, I go to blur and I do a 30% blur just cause it adds a nice, ouch, hit my 
hand. It adds a nice feather to the mask. So even if you are changing the value of these tones over here, it's gonna be very subtle and not gonna look like a color blotch. And you can see it's nice and smooth over all of our skin tone values. This is showing us down here, since our mask is selecting just skin, that our skin is actually right on the skin tone line, which is great. And that's what I love about the new Sony a7S III color science. It's very accurate. It looks really nice. Sue me if I'm wrong. If your skin tone was wacky, what you would use is this little color tool down here beneath your mask selection. And you can basically saturate it by pulling it out this way. And you can change the value, the color completely like this. So if you want to go like full Hulkbuster, you go here, turn off your mask, see what it looks like. What I'll do to get a more correct looking skin tone is I'll just push up into this orangey yellow area, the same direction as this line here on the vector scope, which is your skin tone line, your blood line. And I would push it up to be saturated and then kind of dial it down until it's very subtle as a correction. Deselect the mask and then you can just hit activate to show the difference. And that actually did take away a little bit of magenta and add a nice orange to the skin, which looks really good. And you can even desaturate just parts of the skin. If you're going for more of those muted colors, you could select just the skin and do like 80%. But for this, we're going for more of a saturated vibe anyway. So I'm gonna leave it at 100. So I'm very satisfied with this image. I like the skin tone. There's already a little bit of bluishness in the shadows. And I mean, there's detail in the highlights, but it's still nice and bright and warm and inviting. So I'm very satisfied with this shot. But let's say you do want this shot to be overall like more moody. I'll show you how to add some blueness to your shadows in a different way. So this layer that we just created our skin tone mask, you're gonna copy this, so Command C or Control C, and then paste Command V or Control V. So this is exactly what we just did with the skin tone. But now what we're gonna do is invert our mask. So now when you click that, it's selecting everything in the image except for your skin. And obviously it just made everything more warm because that's what we did to the skin tone. But what you wanna do is now take your slider here and this time pull it into wherever color you want your shadows to be. And typically I like it kind of in this bluish teal, not quite purple area. Um, just because it looks really nice and it's complementary to the orange here. So complementary colors are just opposite on the wheel. So if your skin is orange and you want your shadows to perfectly complement that, you would go horizontal the other direction. And this is the complementary color of blue to that orange that you used. So like we did with the skin, we're gonna keep this extremely subtle and just like pull this back closer to the middle. So yeah, I added just a little bit of blue to our shadows, even in the grass, it just kind of cooled things off. So let's go layer by layer and see what we've done. So here's the regular old S-Log3. Here's our film convert change. And then here's our overall exposure change. That's looking nice. Here's our skin tone adjustment. And then here's our shadow adjustment. So when it comes to achieving a look that I like, I really just try to analyze like, what is the mood of the video? How do I want the viewer to feel? Overall, my goal is just to make my videos feel inviting and fun and warm, like, like a place you can call home, basically. You're, you're a part of this community. That kind of a vibe is what I wanna go for on my channel. And I want there to be as little distraction between the viewer and, and the, the video, the content itself. That's why I don't use grain. That's why I don't use a lot of effects and stuff because I just want it to feel like you're in that video. You're hanging out with me. I hope this video was helpful in some way. Um, if you have further questions, obviously you can leave a comment on the video, but also feel free to join that Discord. It's an amazing community. The people in there are so fun and great to hang out with. And they're very informative as well. If you have questions, feel free to check out my Patreon if you wanna support so my friend Connor can keep working with me on editing and shooting. Um, check out my merch. I got Sony Simp, Cranon, Fuji Juice. And if you like this video, feel free to like the video or subscribe because you're automatically enrolled in my camera camp, which is coming later this year, but only for subscribers. Love you all very much. I'll chat with you in the Discord and uh, I'll see you soon.